how cool is this? I'm gonna save this PSD file really quickly into a large JPEG and a small JPEG with the click of a button. Look at that, a 23 year old problem resolved with Bridge. You might not believe me if I tell you this, but one of my biggest workflow problems in Photoshop has been resolved by Adobe Bridge 2022. Of all things, Bridge solved a huge problem for me that has put a kink in my workflow since I started in Photoshop in 1999. Let me start this off by telling you a little story, but watch this until the end. I got a really big announcement about something coming up in the industry that I think you're really going to enjoy. So here's the story. I'm in Photoshop. I'm editing a picture. It's looking great. I go to save it as a PSD file with all my beautiful layers in there. And then I need to save it as a large JPEG to have that if I need to print it or send it somewhere. But I also want to save it as a small JPEG. That way I can put it on the web. So what happens this is my typical workflow. I save it as a large JPEG image resize, make it really small, 1200 pixels on the longest side and save it as a JPEG again. Then because I'm done, I press the X on my image and I get this pop-up that says, do you want to save? And I say, yeah, sure, whatever, because I'm in a rush. And guess what? I just saved my large PSD file as a very small PSD file and all of that work is very difficult to recover. If this has never happened to you, where you've never saved your large PSD file to a smaller size after image sizing, then this is a story of if and when. It's not if it's going to happen to you, it's when it's going to happen to you. So how does Bridge resolve this problem? Well, in Bridge 2022, you're gonna see something new here that says workflow across the top. And then over here in the section over here, you're gonna see workflow over here. This is the image, the PSD file that I was working on in Photoshop that I wanna make two copies of, a large JPEG and a small JPEG. Sure, there are actions and batch processing you can do in Photoshop, but if you're not familiar with that stuff, it can be really confusing. Workflows make it super easy. So check this out. We're gonna click on the workflow button over here. These are all my workflows that I have right now. And I'm gonna click on this workflow option over here. You're gonna see here, it says, create a sequence of tasks to build a workflow. Click on a preset in your workflow panel, which is over here, or click on create new workflow. So this is what I'm gonna do. I wanna make a workflow. It's gonna convert my image to a large JPEG and a small JPEG. So let's press create new workflow. It's gonna pop up here and ask you, what do we wanna do first? Well. Let's go ahead and ensure that we rename it first. I want to make sure that when I do this, it's going to rename it correctly so that it matches the object that I'm working on. So I'm going to press batch rename. I can change the name of this workflow to this preset here to we'll say LG JPEG. Okay, so I know this is gonna be the large JPEG. We'll save that after we change the name of this workflow. We can close that down. The next thing is, what? where do we want this to save it to? Well, I wanna save it to the original file location so it ends up right next to my PSD file. I'm not gonna save it into a subfolder because I like to see my small and large JPEGs right next to my PSD file. So we're just gonna uncheck that box. Okay, what that will ensure is that this image will be saved in the same folder. So now, the next thing, how do we wanna rename this? Well, we have a series of presets here that we can name. I've already made a couple of presets here for myself, but I'll show you how the, I use this to rename this properly so it matches this file. Right here where it says text, change this to current file name. That's gonna use this file name right here, original case, we're not gonna change the case at all. I don't need the date and time there, you can leave that if you want to. I don't need the sequence number there, I just basically need the text. So this is gonna be the current file name, underscore, and then we're gonna put LG for large. Now we're gonna to need to save this as a preset. So let's go ahead and save the changes and we'll call this LG JPEG. So I know that that's a large JPEG and we'll press okay. I don't need to worry about this information down here. This is all I need to do in order for this to work. So that's just gonna be the rename. Let's also make sure that we change this to a JPEG. So I'm gonna add something to my workflow and we're going to change the format. So if we go down here to change format, what are we gonna change it to? A JPEG. And I want this to be the highest quality JPEG I can get, so I'm gonna move that all the way up. So let's press save. So now let's talk about what's gonna happen here. What's gonna happen when we use this workflow? It's gonna save it into its original file location it's going to add an underscore LG using the current file name, and then it's gonna change the format to a JPEG, okay? So let's save this. Now watch this. If I take this PSD file and I drag it and drop it over here to where it says large JPEG, 
and then I press start workflow, it's going to run its magic. And if we did everything according to plan, we're going to have the exact same image that we worked on in Photoshop, but now as a large JPEG next to it. That's awesome. It seems like a lot of steps at first. We're just setting this up. Once you set it, you can completely forget it. So let's make another one. We're going to call this SM JPEG. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is batch rename it. So let's call this SM JPEG. Okay. We want to save it to the original file location. We want to make sure there's no subfolders there. So we can minimize that. The preset, we're going to need to make a new preset. But first, let's set this up correctly. We want to have the same name, current file name. We're going to delete anything else that doesn't need to be in here. The underscore that's going to come after it, we're going to make that SM. Once we do that, we need to make a new preset here. So we're going to save the changes. We're going to make this SM JPEG. Okay, so we have a, a preset for that at all times. Good to go there. We'll press save. What do we need to do now? Well, this time we need to add a change format. What are we going to change the format to? A low quality JPEG. This could actually work out just fine. We'll press save because it's a eight JPEG. Now, what do we need to do? Let's press resize to what size are we going to resize this to? Well, typically I will resize my images for the web to 1200 on the longest side. So I'll, instead of having scale image at 100% or 75%, we're going to say resize to fit the long edge to 1200 pixels. Press don't enlarge. That way, if the image is smaller than that, it won't enlarge it. It'll just save it out and we'll press save. So if all goes according to plan, we have a batch rename. To rename this, it's current file name with an underscore of SM. We have the format set to a small JPEG and we are resizing it to 1200 pixels on the longest edge. So now if I click on this PSD file and I drag it over to SM JPEG, and then I press start workflow, it's going to run its magic and we should have a JPEG right next to it that has SM underneath it. Now, if we take a look at the size here, it's 811 kilobytes. So we know that that's small and this one is 17 megabytes. So we know that it's large. The great thing about this is it doesn't seem like it's great at first, but here's the deal. Let's say you go out and you process 15 or 20 of these images and they're all in that file folder. Trying to save all of those out in Photoshop using some type of action or batch production is actually more convoluted than you think. What can happen here is let's say there's 15 PSD files in here that you want to save very quickly. All you have to do is if there were more than one here, select all of them, drag them and drop them into the large JPEG, drag them and drop them into the small JPEG. You could have 15 files in here. Once you press start workflow, it's going to run its magic and all of them will be renamed accordingly and resized accordingly. And the best part is, is it's not going to modify that PSD file. So when we open up this PSD file in Photoshop, we can ensure that we do not save over our layered work, making it smaller. To me, this might not be an incredible feature in Adobe Bridge, but what it does do is it resolves a problem that I have and it does it very successfully and very easily. And for that, I'm grateful. And the beauty of it is now that it's all set up, I can use it whenever I want. I did say that there was a big announcement I wanted to share with you. And that is that once again, Dave Cross has wrangled 20 of the most incredible Photoshop instructors. And I'm there too, to do the Photoshop virtual summit number four. If you've never been a part of one of these things, this is where 20 instructors come together and each do two mini courses that are about 45 minutes a piece for a total of 40 sessions in the Photoshop virtual summit. Now the virtual summit is completely free to watch live, but if you become a VIP member, you get access to all the stuff that we're going to be showing you there. And I've got some pretty cool presets that I've created for Adobe camera Raw that I think you're going to enjoy. What am I going to be speaking on? I'm going to be speaking on workflow, just like you saw here and raw masking unmasked. I'm going to dig deep into raw masks and show you all the incredible things that you can do with the new Adobe camera raw masking to get registered. Click on the link in the description below or on this picture right here. It all kicks off May 2nd, 2022. I'm excited to see you there. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.